Hello everyone and thanks for coming back. I was contacted by a subscriber named Michael and his son Cohen about building a Mad Max Mech Warrior. This immediately intrigued me and seemed like a fun challenge, so I decided to take it on. This ended up being quite the project and will probably represent my longest video to date, as I didn't want to break this particular video up as I have in the past. A couple things to note before I get started. I'm building and filming this as I go, thus you get a front row seat to some of my mistakes in both the model and the video editing process. The proper way to do this type of video is to build one model, work out its kinks, and then build a second model and film it. That being said, you're still getting all the steps if you did want to make this particular model. The second thing to note is that of scale. I'm sure you've noticed that the scale in most modern uh, 164 die cast cars is laughable. I will do my best to conceal scale issues in this particular model, however a keen eye will be able to pick them out. Alright, well let's get started. Now it looks like we're starting off with these five cars, however we're only going to use three of them because the other two were not required. We'll also be adding in some other cars later in the video. The three cars we're going to start with are the dump truck, the road grader, and the snow machine. Now the first thing I will do is take all the cars apart and then harvest their parts. For the snow machine I went ahead and separated the two tracks as this was just one piece on the machine. I chose this model because the tracks use metal interior parts which I'll take advantage of in a bit. Okay this matchbox road grader is actually on the pegs right now. I drilled it apart and removed its wheels. We will require two of them. I'm using this model as it will allow two points of articulation. The core of the mech will be this dump truck body. I need to make room for the legs to go in the back, so I'll put the body in a vise and use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel to remove parts that are in the way. This will all make sense in a bit. The Zamec metal they use for die cast is very easy to cut with a Dremel, and it's also very easy to file, so these changes only take a few seconds to make. Since the end result will be a beat up mech, I'm not too worried about the cuts being all that clean. Now here's where I ended up making a small mistake, but it's not all that big of a deal. I'm going to use these treads as part of the feet of my mech. To do this, I need to be able to attach them to the legs. Since the tread assemblies have metal inserts for the tread guides, I can use a drill and tap to allow me to screw the feet to the legs. In this case, I'm going to use a number 2-56 tap, but any small tap and screw will work. And in fact, in most cases, a screw will self-tap in Zamec anyway, so you don't have to use a tap. As for the mistake I'm making, I'm placing the hole in the wrong part of the tread assembly at this point. The hole should go in the other visible post between my finger and thumb. The hole I'm currently drilling and tapping is way too low and causes the feet to drag. Okay, so the bottom of this street grater, where the back wheels used to be attached, is where I plan the feet to now be attached, and the screw will act as an ankle, so to speak. I use a file to try and file the back end to be parallel as possible to the legs, and then drill a hole at the bottom for the screw to go through. I then remove the tabs with the file as they were in the way. It took some fine tuning, but in the end the feet could be screwed on the back of the road grader. The tread all by themselves is not enough support for the mech and will look strange if used alone. To give the feet more surface area and to make the mech look more menacing, I'll use the bottom part of the road grater as the top part of the feet. This is done by simply gluing the grater part to the tread. As luck would have it, the two parts went together without any modification. Okay, now it's time to attach our legs to the main body of the model. I will glue the cab of the road grader to the wheel wells of the dump truck. This is why earlier I had to use a Dremel on the dump truck so that the road grader would fit. But I scratched up the surface of the dump truck where the industrial strength super glue would be used. This was to give the glue something to hold on to. Now it's probably a good time to step back and see where we are. I've put the model together showing my progress thus far. I did have to do a little fine tuning on the feet, but the model is now freestanding and can be posed to some degree. So the mech is going to need some weapons. Some I will scratch build, but others like this tank turret I plan to just steal. 
My plan is to mount this gun upside down and underneath the dump truck. I want the turret to be able to turn, so I'll need to take that into account when placing it on the model. To attach the turret, I will glue in a small piece of tubing to the dump truck body seen here. You can buy this tubing in large bags at Hobby Lobby. They're bags of remnant pieces, from what I'm not real sure, but the bag comes with hundreds of small bits of tubing in all sizes and lengths. The tubing has a large enough diameter to accept the turret post and thus hold the turret in place. Since I'm not gluing the turret in place, it can turn with no issue and is also removable. Okay, so I want to now focus on the top of the model. My mech will need an engine to run it, so I'm going to use the engine from the snow machine. This is a case where the skewed scale will work to my advantage. I need to place the engine in the back of the mech, and to do this, I will need to do some surgery on the engine base to allow it to attach. I'll use nippers to accomplish this. Once the engine is in place, I will measure and cut the top plastic part of the dump truck to fit the top of the mech. Once this is done, I can put the mech back together to see where I am. As you can see, I left half the dump truck in place. I'm about to make a large fuel tank for this area, and the idea is that the dump truck bed would act as protection for this large fuel tank, at least for small arms fire. I'm going to make the fuel tank out of some aluminum rod on my mini metal lathe. I could have just easily have made it out of a dowel rod on my wood lathe and much faster, but felt the aluminum rod would lend to a better look in the final product. I realize most people don't have these tools at home. I'm only using a lathe here as I started to feel like I wouldn't get this model done in time. When that happens, when I feel under pressure, I usually resort to scratch building things for speed. I'm sure if I had the time, I could have found something that would have worked without resorting to a lathe to make one. Anyway, given the size of the tank, I had to do most of the work with a metal cutoff tool, as the other tools I have were too large. Here's what the tank looked like when I was done. Since I've already scratch built the tank, I might as well scratch build the Gatlin gun for the front of the mech. You've seen me build this type of gun in a past video, however due to the size constraints, that gun can only have three barrels. This time size is not a problem, so I can build a more realistic gun for this mech. This gun is made up of two large tubes that will hold several smaller tubes, the barrels, and a center core rod that keeps the barrels in place. To build the gun, I simply place the core inside the larger of the two tubes, and then start placing the barrels around the core. Once all the barrels are in place, I can slide on the other smaller tube that acts as a holding ring. Once this is done, I can glue the barrels in place and then file them all to the same length. This gun is made from off-the-shelf tubing you can buy at any hobby store. I want to mount the gun in the front of the mech and make it the most prominent part of the model. However, I have a round peg square hole issue I need to take care of. To fix this, I need to drill out the square hole and make it round. This is done with a drill, but not in the way that you might think. The drill is used in reverse because if used in the proper direction, it will bind up on the square hole. Using it in reverse will not bind up the drill bit, but will make the drilling process a bit longer. It will eventually, though, cut the hole. Okay, now I want to put in a little bit of texture. I want my mech to look a little bit beat up and used, and add a little bit of battle damage. To do this, I'll use this round Dremel tool to make plunges into the die cast metal of the hood and around the sides. I'm also going to put in a gash that later I plan to make look like the mech was grazed by a large caliber round. Alright, so here's where I am so far. I'm now going to start the painting and weathering process. So if you made it this far, now might be a good time to pause the video and grab a beverage of your choice, because now I'm going to start with all the fine detail work on this mech. So the first thing I'll do is airbrush a rust-colored surface primer over the relevant parts of the mech. Here I'm using German Red Brown by Vallejo. This is one of my favorite primers as it kills two birds with one stone. It is both a primer and a rust undercoat. While I wait for the primer to dry, I'll go ahead and paint the gun turret silver and then overspray that with black and then wipe away to give a greasy dirty look. Then I'll clear coat the turret with a matte clear coat and set aside to dry. Since I have black paint loaded in the airbrush, I'll do the same thing to the hood of the mech and the engine. 
Once again, you just airbrush on black and then use your fingers to wipe the paint off before it dries. Alright, so switching gears, I will now focus on the gas tank once again. I have a bunch of these water transfer decals for train sets. Many of them are gas company related. I chose to use this mobile gas decal. So I'll go ahead and pop that into the water and let it soak for a few minutes. I will then use a pair of tweezers and a small paintbrush to apply the decal. Once I have it where I want it, I will then tear it. This tear is to give the tank an older look, something I'll be adding to later. Moving back to the mech, I will now go over the body with a rust pigment. This pigment is best applied before the primer is completely dried. A slightly tacky primer works best at holding the pigment in place. This pigment and the rust primer will both act as our undercoat for the chipping process we'll be using later. Once the pigment is where I want it to go, I will then clear coat the model. Once the clear coat is dry, I will then spray the entire model with AK Interactive chipping fluid. Or if you just really want to go cheap, you can just spray the model with an aerosol can of extra hold hairspray. Both work fine for what I'm doing here. Once the chipping agent is dry, I will then paint the model with an acrylic paint. You must use acrylic for this technique to work. I chose yellow as most of the road implements are yellow in real life. The color really is not that important, as you just want a color different from the rust color of the model. Once the paint is dry, you can move on to doing the actual chipping process. For this, all you need is a stiff brush and some water. Dip the brush in water and then apply the water to the paint. The water will soak through the acrylic paint and dissolve the chipping fluid or hairspray underneath. The acrylic paint then takes on a chipped look, exposing the rust and pigment layer below that were protected by the clear coat. This technique works in conjunction with the texturing technique I used earlier to give an extremely beat up look. Once the chipping is where I want it, I'll go ahead and clear coat again to set everything in stone. Once that dries, I then start to go over the bright paint with a wash. Here I'm using Knoll Oil by Citadel. You'll see the container for this wash later in the video. After the wash is dried, I'll come back with the pigment. The pigment is soaked in some rubbing alcohol to allow it to be painted on. It looks like it's way too bright and thick, but I plan to clear coat after the pigment is dried. When you clear coat pigment, it tends to go transparent, so if you wish to see it at all in the final product, you'll need it to go on rather thick when you apply it. Okay, so here's what the rust and wash look like after I applied the clear coat. And here's what the model looks like at this point, all put back together. As you can see, the rust pigment is still there and showing up after the clear coat. As I mentioned earlier, I dremeled a gouge into the hood here to give the look of battle damage. Now that this area is painted, I will use a file to remove the paint all the way down to the metal. This is done to make the damage look more recent. For the windshield of this model, I'll go with the standard wire mesh. This is simply cut to size and glued into place. I could rust the metal, but given the number of rust tones in this project, I decided to leave it as is to help break up the other colors in the model. I would like to add some other details to this model like some jerry cans. I couldn't find any jerry cans in my junk drawer of spare model parts. The only ones I could find were on this tank I made several years ago. I don't want to rip these off to use them. I spent a lot of time and effort on this tank, so instead I'll use some clay to make an impression of the jerry cans without hurting my tank. I'll make two impressions of the jerry can and then press them onto the table. I will then mix up some resin and then pour it into my impressions or molds. I'm not going to show the process of how to use the resin as I've had several videos on this by itself. So if you're interested in doing it, just watch those videos. Once the resin has cured, I can remove the cans from their molds. I like to do this as quickly as possible because the resin is pliable for some time. This allows me to shape the cans and make sure they are straight. Also it's easier to remove any flashing on the part at this stage. Once I have everything the way I want it, I set them aside to fully cure and harden. After they have hardened, I can use a toothbrush to remove any residual clay on the part. I would like to make some other small details for this mech. So here I have a very small piece of leather. I'm going to fold this leather once and then roll it up. I'll then use some string to tie the roll. This will make a small bed roll or tarp to be attached to the mech. 
This is done a lot when making tank models as soldiers would strap tools and other items to the sides of tanks. I'm using leather here as it has a much finer grain than fabrics and is also easier to shape. Okay, so now I'm going back and focus on the feet once more. You can see that the feet have writing on them as they were once the bottom of the road grader. Instead of sanding this off, I've decided to just texture over it. So I'll start by airbrushing them a light dirt color. And then I'll mix this color with some dirt colored pigment and some darker pigment. All these pigments will be applied with the brush and will represent dirt and grime on the feet and conceal the writing. Once all the dirt and grime has dried, I will once again clear coat with a matte clear coat. Now I'm going to age the Gatlin gun a bit using the Knoll Oil by Citadel. This is easy to use as you apply with a brush and let dry. Once dry, I clear coat it to protect it. The final detail I will add are these missile pods. These are from an Apache helicopter model, I think. I will paint them silver and then paint their tips red, and then oil wash them, followed by a clear coat. I will then glue them into place on the back of the mech. The red tips are just for looks and to give the model more color. Since I have the glue out, I will also glue on my gas tank, my jerry cans, and my Gatlin gun. I will then use some black in my airbrush to touch up the tips of all the barrels and the turret and then clear coat the whole model one last time. And here's the final piece. I did the best I could to hide the scale issues from the road grader and other parts. Of course, if anyone looks carefully, they'll probably be able to make them out. I don't think I used any techniques in this video that I haven't used in greater detail in other videos. So if you have any questions about any one technique, be sure to look through my past videos for videos specific to that technique. Or you can feel free to ask below and I'll try to forward you the correct video. I want to thank Cohen for his idea. I really enjoyed working on something a bit bigger than usual. If you have an idea for a video you would like to see, please feel free to bring it to my attention below. Also, I'm sure that there's a bunch of other things you could do to this particular model or other cars that would make great mechs. Please let me know below if you have some ideas in that area. Last, I want to thank everyone for putting up with my voice in this video. I've been under the weather and had hoped to be feeling better before having to edit this video together. It was not to be. So sorry about that. If you like this model and like to see other videos of this type, please let me know below in the comment section and the like button. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.